The Battle of Fort Necessity. This was one of the opening battles in the of the French and Indian War, and it was important that opening battles are quite exciting. Otherwise, everyone just get just sort of loses interest. In 1754, George Washington was sent to the head of the Ohio River, Ohio River Valley, with a group of Virginia militia. The land was contested territory between British colonists and French. Washington's mission was to retake Fort Duquesne since that's how I chose to pronounce it, and drive French forces out of the area. Washington and his troops attacked a French patrol in Jumonville, Glen, in what would be the first acts of violence in the war. Washington expected a return attack, and so had his troops build a palisade wall surrounding their supplies, a fort of necessity, hence the name. But they might as well have called it Fort of Inadequacy because supplies ran low, and the militia and their British regular reinforcements were quickly overwhelmed. On July 4th, Washington surrendered was bleh. Washington surrendered, was allowed to retreat, and someone else was put in charge of naming forts. It was Washington's only military surrender, though. He had plenty of strategic retreats. PR spin was alive and well, even then. Who are you? John Fraser, also spelled Fraser or Fraser, was a Scottish born trader living in the area of Fort Duquesne during the French and Indian War and a participant in the Braddock Expedition. Fraser left Scotland sometime in se after 1745, possibly because of political troubles. The Frasers had supported the Stuarts, who were on the losing end of a rebellion. He set up trade on the upper Al Allegheny River, Allegheny? Allegheny? Allegheny River but was quickly run out of his cabin by the French. He moved further down the river, near modern-day Pittsburgh, built a cabin, and continued to trade. Fraser was one of the settlers building a fort on the site of Fort Duquesne, near his own land, where the French took over again. Fraser supplied Washington's attempt to reclaim the fort in 1754, which was followed by the defeat of Fort Necessity, and served as the chief scout during the Braddock expedition. After Braddock failed, Fraser gave up on the area, depriving the French of a third opportunity to chase him off his land. So I suppose that's a small victory. He moved to Tuscarora, Tuscarora Valley, before finally settling at Fort Bedford. Why is George Washington pop up? Here's a name you, even you should recognize, George Washington, who will go on to be the leader of the army during the American Revolution and the first president of the United States. I was going to say you probably know everything I'm going to tell you, but that would be a lie. What you know is that George Washington has a lot of things named after him, and every, anything else you learned in school you forgot because you thought you'd never use it in real life. You should call your history teacher and tell her she was right all along. George Washington was the son of a planter from Virginia. He was raised with little education, but was ambitious, teaching himself mostly from books. Washing... Washing? That threw me off. Washing started in business early, speculating on land starting at the age of 18. When he was 20, his older brother died, leaving him the heir of the family plantation at Mount Vernon, where he lived until his death and where you can still visit his grave today. Washington got his military start during the French and Indian War, leading an expedition of Fort Duquesne in 1754, a destination he never reached having surrounded at Fort Necessity. Oh, surrendered, not surrounded. The next year, Washington headed to Fort Duquesne again, this time as a guide for Edward Braddock during the ill-fitted Braddock expedition. Washington went as a volunteer, hoping that working for Braddock would get him on a track to military promotion. Through the battle, though, though the battle was a rout, Washington earned a credit for organizing the retreat, and later that year he was made a colonel in charge of the Virginia militia. Washington completely revamped the militia with hopes that under his organization and training they would be accepted into the British military. They never were. Washington resigned his post in 1758. I won't say the snub led to his contempt for the British, but snubs really rarely help. By the late 1760s, Washington had become active in political life, taking on a role in the Virginia House of Burgesses. Burgesses. He went on to be a member of the Con Continental Congress, and when, he, and when war broke out in 1775, he was Congress's choice to lead the army. 
At the time, Washington said, I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with, which I'm, I'm sure inspired complete confidence in everyone who heard it. Imagine if you were on an airplane and the captain opened with that. It's possible Washington was falsely immodest, but the fact is, is this. He wasn't a military genius, and he knew it. Though I'm sure it hurts your, your American pride to hear me say he wasn't perfect. Washington had several narrow misses where the army could have easily been obliterated at Manhattan and again at Brandywine, among others. Washington won an early victory. He broke. Uh, Washington won an early victory, victory. He broke the siege of Bast Baston. I said it again, Baston. But he then made the disastrous move of fortifying New York, a city he would he couldn't defend without a navy he didn't have. Even you can work that one out. He spent the later half of 1776 retreating across New York and New Jersey, losing battle after battle, until Christmas when he pulled off a successful surprise attack, the Hessian troops at Trenton. Trenton. And while that battle makes for some famous paintings, and it did rally the flagging of confidence of the public, it was a minor victory in the war. Hey there, Desmond. As you'll see from the date of this email, you, you've been in the Animus for a few days now. But don't worry, I've been staying on top of your vitals, not even a blip. So it looks like extending the sessions won't be a problem. Whatever happened between you and 16 seems to have increased your tolerance. The Animus keeps you in a resting state which takes care of fatigue. And your memories are vivid enough we're actually seeing micro-movement in your muscles. Which means no atrophy issues here, either. Still... We'll be bringing you out for breaks just to stay on the safe side. 